As we begin this rebuttal, we would like to go back to the criteria mentioned by the affirmative of immediacy and practicality that went unrefuted by the negative. Therefore, we must abide by these two criteria in order to determine what should be the most urgent response. Once again, we see that as being the top priority because we need to factor in short-term concerns like, uh, like immediacy, which they did not refute in the last rebuttal. Also, I would like to note how they re referred to an ought rather than a should in their last speech. This means that that ultimately, when we're looking at what should be the most urgent response, we're looking at the probability and practicality of a response. Once again, going back to our criteria, which the negative does not mean in this debate. OK, now I'm going to start by addressing tipping points. First, if the tipping point for mitigation is really 40 years away, there's little urgency to mitigate right now. Therefore, we should vote affirmative based off the fact that we have 40 years to mitigate ultimately in this round according to the negative. So then they do not provide any urgency. Second, you can see from scientist Fred Guterol that there's time to avoid tipping points in climate change. However, we simply do not have 40 years to do so. Therefore, we need to see that we need to adapt to the current climate changes and mitigate, as that provides immediacy and practicality in the end. Next, they talk about marine biology and especially coral reefs. However, according to the New York Times, coral reefs cannot change the trajectory in less than 20 to 50 years. In short, these forces are unstoppable and irreversible. Therefore, what we really need to do is strengthen humanity's ability to live without these coral reefs and adapt. Um, once again, the negative also argued that adaptation would cause a scarcity of resources and that would lead to war. However, first, by, com by combining development and assistant goals, we can preserve resources and actually make peace and lead to peace making adaptation the most urgent response in this scenario, alleviating these concerns, these, these concerns about the scarcity of resources through combining that development component to help these nations adjust. As well, the negative argues that there's no funding to adapt for developing nations. However, at the recent Rio Plus 20 convention in 2012, there was $513 billion that was given to uh, developing nations in order to adapt to climate change as well as pursue development goals. This ensures that there will be adaptation funding for the countries that need it. Now we will move on to carbon tax, or um, ca um, cap and trade points. First, we need to realize that China has only has two pilot programs in cap and trade, and they have not been implemented yet, according to the S Sustainable Business Magazine from two days ago. China will use adaptation to protect their economic growth, therefore, because, once again, they want to preserve their economic interests. Second. Japan has also recently proposed their cap-and-trade program indefinitely, showing the lack of practicality from the Japan's cap-and-trade program, according to the magazine National Affairs in 2012. Third, the European Union system is failing, according to the magazine Coexist, as it's marked with reoccurring controversy over issues like windfall gains, gaming by market participants, and thefts of re registries that are supposed to keep permits safe. Most seriously, there has been a continual oversupply of permits, thus keeping carbon prices low, and emissions still have not fallen since. This um, proves that there's a lack of practicality in the response from all these cap and trade measures that my opponents have stated. So, um, as well, look to the Briggs Institution in 2010, which says that cap and trade measures will see emissions still rise at a constant rate of 4% for years for many decades, also not making it an immediate response. Finally, the Institute for Energy Research explicates that the cost of a cap and trade system within the United States altogether would increase the cost of gasoline by 144% and increase the cost of electricity by 129%. Up to 4 million Americans would lose their jobs, thus not making it an immediate or practical solution in the long term. Finally, we will move to the carbon sequestration point. First, look to our Solomon evidence that emissions will linger for centuries upon century, or upon, or for centuries meaning that this is not an immediate response, not meeting the criteria. Second, carbon sequestration is deeply flawed as the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimates. Carbon is stored biologically, it already induces large quantities of carbon, but storage may not be permanent. In a sense, this will not be a foolproof solution and it's not a practical response to climate changes. Um, as well, the actual implementation of carbon sequestration is likely to be a, at a high cost due to, the economic, um, due to factors such as environmental risks risk of leakage and of, of not of safe storage, as well as a lack of clear legal framework for public acceptance, thus making it impractical once again. Third, knowledge gaps exist to impede the overall ability for widespread integration of carbon sequestration, leading to impracticability once again. So overall in this debate, the negative does not meet the once again agreed upon criteria of immediacy and practicality, whereas the affirmative side clearly upholds them, 
by showing clear um, implementable technologies and, and in a time frame that will save lives. Thank you.